In July 1978, Taito released one of the most important arcade games ever, Space Invaders. Taking its inspiration from arcade hits like Breakout and Gunfight, as well as the popular novel War of the Worlds, the anime space battle Yamata, and of course, an early write-up of a little-known movie called Star Wars. And I'm sure it comes to the surprise of nobody watching this channel, but Space Invaders? Yeah, that was a pretty big deal. But with that said, Tomohiro Nishikada, the designer of said game, had no idea that his creation would be as popular as it was, as upon release it had a pretty slow start. However, after the initial 1000 units were shipped that all included buttons instead of a joystick to move your spaceship left and right, the Invader phenomenon soon took over. Entire buildings better known as Invader Houses popped up dedicated to this and very few other machines in Japan. A coin shortage because of this game has been well documented, although in more recent years debunked. And there were even reports of a robbery that took place during the game's heyday so that the robber in question could get more tokens to play Space Invaders. But why is that exactly? Well, to put it bluntly, it's a pretty good game. Popular games came before it, but this, this was gaming's first true blockbuster. A combination of simple yet not too easy and addictive gameplay styles, mixed with a tension building soundtrack released just at the right time when space themed movies and TV shows dominated the box office, resulting in a thousand copycats that helped build up the public's interest and in turn, this particular game's legacy. In fact, Space Invaders is so popular today that its sprites and very few other game sprites are used to showcase gaming as a whole. Oh, and uh, the arcade cabinet itself? Yeah, that was pretty damn revolutionary too. Several different editions of Space Invaders made their way into the wild due to Taito themselves simply not being able to handle the huge demand that this game brought with it, but without a doubt the most iconic and popular cabinet was the upright housing blue arcade cabinet from Titotronics. And as great and legendary as that original arcade game is, the arcade cabinet deserves just as much attention. To the average passerby, all classic arcade units probably look the same, and besides the colour, the artwork and of course the game itself, you're not too far wrong, but when it comes to the design of this stand-up Space Invader cabinet, it is in fact very different. Recently I was invited to go along and see this cabinet in its recreated form by Numskull Designs as part of their latest quarter arcade cabinets, and then we were going to go take this cabinet to a real arcade, remember those, to compare it to one of the original machines. I have got every single quarter arcade machine that this company has ever put out twice for a couple of them, see if you can point them out. Um, but yeah, this particular arcade cabinet was going to be so, so different than everything else on that shelf. It was going to be Numskull's biggest challenge to date, and I know about a few of the troubles they've had with this cabinet leading up to its release. So of course, I wanted to take them up on their offer and see how it was going to compare to these machines. So, Space Invaders. As you can see, it's far more blocky than anything that has ever come before it. The cabinet almost gives off a bit of a shipping container vibe with its metal hinges that are found at the top, and although they are fairly common for a lot of Taito's early machines, they really are most at home here on Space Invaders. The marquee, aka the light-up strip that goes along the top of most arcade games, unlike others in this line with Space Invaders, it's a part of the bezel, aka the artwork that goes around the screen. In other words, it's all the same. And because of this, it does surprisingly have a light that shines about three quarters down through the logo itself that you may think is a tag skew with, but in actual fact for this particular model, known to many as the original Taito model, which is without a doubt the most iconic as opposed to the Valley machines that are more common in certain regions of America, it is indeed true to form. 
Hey there guys, this is DJ Slope from the future here in the editing phase of this video. And the footage that you're seeing right here on the screen is a real Space Invaders part two cabinet that I got to see a couple of weeks after going to visit Numbskull at the arcade club in Bury. Now, unfortunately, everything I just said in that last section was not correct. The light that shines behind the Space Invaders logo does in fact cover the entire logo and it doesn't cut off the bottom of the Space Invaders logo. This is an issue they had with the first version of this cabinet. They made it a little bit better on the second revision, but unfortunately it wasn't exactly how it should have been. I brought this up with them saying that I have now seen a proper cabinet and they did inform me that a third revision, which is the final version, does fix this issue. This is the footage they sent over to me, which has come straight from the factory. And as you can see, besides the fact that it is a bit too bright, it does fix this issue. I'm so glad glad I was able to spot this before making my video live and I'm extra glad that Numskull were able to spot it too. Anyway, let's carry on with the video. And finally, when looking at the outside of the cabinet itself, the quarter arcade goes into detail with the coin slot and other various coin collection areas, speakers and most importantly, this big yellow dot. Only joking. I have absolutely no idea what that yellow dot is all about. If anyone down in the comments wants to explain that to me, go ahead. I'm genuinely quite intrigued. So yeah, that's the exterior, or at least the most recognizable exterior in all of its blue glory. Oh, and by the way, Space Invaders Part 2 is also coming, and that one is red. But more on that in a little bit. But before that, let's take a look at the inside of this machine because this is where Numskull Designs really did struggle. Because Space Invaders is not only different on the outside, it's different on the inside too. Where most arcade machines have a flat screen that you're gonna need to crane in and put just at the right position, pointing directly at you, the player. On Space Invaders, that screen is reversed. It's a mirror image of what it should be and it's upside down and it's kind of pointing away from you, the player. The reason for this is because that big fat CRT screen will illuminate a sheet of glass or plastic that will then bounce back to me, the player, the right way around and not upside down. And as the arcade machine projected just white sprites on a black background, this effect will only display those white sprites and everything else, AKA the black and therefore now the clear area, will showcase whatever's behind behind the clear sheet of plastic or glass, which in this case is a planet and some stars. <laughs> Look, it's quite hard to explain. For anyone out there that hasn't played Space Invaders, the original Space Invaders arcade machine, then you're missing out. It's known as the Pepper's Ghost Effect, and it's more commonly used in the famous Disneyland attraction, the Haunted Mansion. Given off a sort of slightly see-through ghostly effect that's just sort of floating in front of you. And for Space Invaders, it was the perfect way to give off just the right amount of transparency to the player that for the time wasn't used to seeing colorful backgrounds in their arcade games. In fact, it simply just wasn't possible. Now, Space Invaders wasn't the first to do this illusion, but it was one of the first to do it this well. It's an illusion that even my $406 Nintendo Switch import Space Invader Invincible Collection Special Edition set can't replicate. That is unless you do a little bit of DIY.
just need to make sure that you turn your switch upside down and of course constantly remind yourself that the left is right and the right is left or I suppose you could turn your nunchuck upside down. Yeah, it's a pretty hard effect to replicate and sadly for numbskull designs, it's an effect that they didn't get right first time. The main problem is the fact that an LCD screen just simply doesn't glow as brightly as an old fat CRT screen. Because of this, the team added a light strip to the top of the unit pointing down and although in theory this kind of worked, unfortunately this made the inside of the cabinet too bright, resulting in the invaders looking slightly more see-through than they should have been and strangely giving off an effect that pushes them behind the background. It's weird to explain, either way it just didn't look right. Plus, you could see the outside of the LCD screen reflected onto that plastic or glass. It just didn't look right and completely ruined the effect. Thankfully, on the next revision, not only did they fix up a few exterior details, but more importantly, they changed up the lighting issue too by adding a softer, dark light strip and boom, it's pretty much perfect. You no longer have the exterior of the LCD screen glowing up around the play field and the blackness of the inside of the cabinet it is now just black. In other words, you can't see it like you did before thanks to them no longer shining a big white light in what should be a dark area. And the sprites themselves are ever so slightly less see-through. They have like maybe a 10% at most transparency which is fairly accurate to the original arcade machine as seen right here. Now sadly this, the real arcade machine that we went to go and see, was a bit of a bodge job, having the bezel and marquee of the original but inside we had the guts of the sequel. So here's the comparison to the sequel instead of the original and as you can see it's pretty much exactly one for one. But I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to cover your new quarter arcade machine in cigarette burns and beer stains to get the full effect. And for those interested, there's not really a lot that needs to be said about Space Invaders Part 2 that hasn't been explained already for the first game. For those that don't know, Part 2 is pretty much exactly the same as the first, just in colour. And the odd little hidden extra that I'll let you guys figure out if you can. Regardless whatever one you play, you know what you're getting, and I mean I don't really need to tell you, but Space Invaders definitely holds up. So yeah, overall, I'm a big fan of these arcade machines already, that's a given, but this one, this one was a really hard one for Numbskull to do and I've had my pre-order for an extremely long time and well that pre-order is likely going to be getting itself a pre-order buddy as I will probably bite the bullet and get the part two machine as well. I, yeah, I really like these machines. It's an awesome little machine and I'm really excited to get it even though I will need to be getting a new shelf because this shelf sits flush with the front of these arcade machines. They can't go back any further and the Space Invader cabinet is ever so slightly deeper, which is just like the original arcade unit that they have replicated. So I, you know, I suppose I can't blame them for that. Still, good job Numbskull, it's a fine little device and for me personally I doubt you'll ever make anything better than this moving forward. Pizza Power!